Preventing childhood obesity is important to you as an individual and it's also important to our society in general. We know that the number of fat cells that a person develops depends on his body fat as he is going into and out of adolescence. There are many preventable diseases which can actually be affected if you are not obese and they would include problems with the brain, hormones in your body, your lungs, your heart, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, and the long bones of your body. One of the messages that, uh, that I think it's important that you hear from me and that I wanted to tell you is, you know, some of the studies that uh, we read in the journals that physicians read says that the younger generation, that would be you, are going to have a shorter lifespan and life expectancy than your parents. This is the first time in uh, the history of America where that is projected. Now the reason that's said to be true is because of obesity. Now the reason I'm here is to, is to tell you this to see if we can't do something about it if that applies. Now that certainly doesn't apply to everyone, but I think it's a message that we need to get out because it's estimated that one third of the young population is either overweight or obese. We know the number of fat cells that your body develops occurs about right now through late adolescence. So if you go into that period of your life overweight, then you have a certain number of fat cells which you have the rest of your life. Won't change. And you spend the rest of your life either filling those fat cells or emptying those fat cells. So the idea is to limit the number of fat cells that you have in your body by going into that particular time, you know, being the right weight. Now what I want to do is I have some specific organ examples here of how being obese or being overweight can actually adversely affect those particular organs. We're going to ask some questions and get some answers to it and then we're going to go over here and look at some organs where you can see what I'm talking about, at least see some normals and some abnormals. Now I got this information off the internet. I thought it was a pretty good presentation. It came from the Washington Post. It was funded by the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation. I tell you this because I didn't write all this stuff, but I thought it was a pretty good presentation and I sort of used it with their permission. So let's talk about hormone effects and how obesity affects hormones. A hormone is a substance released from one tissue or one organ which typically circulates through the bloodstream and has an effect on a distant tissue or organ. An example of that would be like the pancreas secretes insulin, which causes the blood sugar to drop because the sugar is absorbed in fat tissue and in skeletal muscle tissue. But we know that fat tissue in the belly secretes a lot of hormones, bad hormones, really bad hormones. The hormones that come from the fat tissue in the belly can cause high blood pressure. The hormones that can come from fat tissue in the belly can cause insulin not to work. In other words, the insulin is secreted by the pancreas, but it doesn't work. So more and more insulin has to be secreted until the patient develops type 2 or adult onset diabetes. Not juvenile onset, but type 2 or adult onset diabetes. We know that the fat around the abdominal cavity can be uh, producing a hormone which causes inflammation, causes atherosclerosis, hardening the arteries, which can predispose you at a later time to a heart attack and a stroke. Now that can occur in boys and girls. Now there's a hormone, or we know that if, if a girl is overweight, she may have premature onset of periods or menses. If that occurs within two years of that time, uh, her height tends to, uh, to be arrested at that level. In other words, she may not reach her total potential of height. And that can be associated with polycystic ovaries, which can cause abnormal hair growth in certain parts of her body. It can also be associated with relative sterility or inability to have babies. Now that's not to say that everyone's going to get that, or that's not to say that people who aren't overweight can't have that, but the risk is increased in that particular situation. So that's some effects of being overweight on hormones produced by your body. What about your brain? Well, there's rare instances where pressure around the brain actually acts like it's increased. So that can cause chronic headaches and visual disturbance. So that also is seen by pediatricians. Again, it's extremely rare.
but it is associated with being overweight or obese. What about lungs? Well, the lungs, it's the organ that's responsible for bringing oxygen into your bloodstream, taking carbon dioxide out. And we know that the airways are called bronchioles. You see on the left-hand bottom a normal bronchial. That allows air to flow in and out normally from your lungs. If you look on the right, you see an asthmatic bronchial. And that's a smaller caliber uh, pipe which interferes with airflow, and that is associated with asthma in certain situations. And we know that obesity increases your risk of asthma. Have you ever heard of sleep apnea? That's, that's sort of something that can go along with being overweight. That's where fat can be around the upper airway and obstruct airflow in and out, causes poor sleep habits, snoring, uh, poor rest can cause hypertension, all kinds of things. But that's something that we didn't see until the obesity epidemic hit. What about the heart? Remember we talked about hormones released from uh, fat around the abdomen causes high blood pressure? That adversely affects the heart, makes it harder on the heart to pump blood. Uh, there's certain irregular heartbeats that can be associated with, with obesity affecting the heart. And we know that inflammatory hormones from these fat tissues can also cause heart attacks and strokes. So there's all sorts of detrimental effects where being overweight can affect the heart. This is a, a, a relatively new thing. The liver filters out toxins and poisons from the bloodstream and also secretes bile and other digestive substances to aid in digestion of our food. And we know that if, if the liver has too many toxins to, uh, to purify over time, like alcohol, you can develop cirrhosis of the liver. But we also know that fatty deposition within the liver is a toxin. So you can get fat infiltration of the liver and you can actually get cirrhosis from fat infiltration of the liver. This is a relatively new thing over the last uh, several, several years, but this is a cause of cirrhosis of the liver, not just alcohol anymore. We also know that uh, gallbladder disease and gallstones, which used to be unheard of in kids, now is more common because uh, cholesterol stones can form in gallbladders and actually cause indigestion dyspepsia, all sorts of problems with digestion and symptoms in the stomach and end up causing you to have your gallbladder taken out. We talked about the pancreas already, but here's something the pediatricians tell me that they see not infrequently. If, if a person is carrying around excessive amounts of weight, the weight-bearing joints, like the ball and socket joints of the hip, you can actually get slippage in these areas where the long bone continues to grow before it becomes solid and your, your longitudinal growth stops, and that can cause chronic hip problems. So that's just bearing the weight of, of a person's body when, when your joints are still growing. So that's just another example of how weight can adversely affect someone's organs and someone's body parts.